This is a Fox Sports presentation. Springtime. Stanley Cup fever's rising. It's the NHL on Fox. The Flyers and Pens collide in a Keystone State duel. Eric's injured, but Philly still has that playoff punch. Meanwhile, Penguin Pistols Yager and Francis are popping off. In a Buffalo brouhaha, it's the Bruins and Sabres. Allison's aim is true in Beantown, but the Sabres are sharp, and Boston better beware. Motown meets Broadway when the Wings and Rangers rage. Detroit's chasing stars in the West. In the East, New York's just chasing. The Avs rumble into San Jose to shake up the Sharks. Colorado wants to recapture the cup, while in the Shark Tank, they're thirsty for a postseason sip. The Kings want to crown the Coyotes in L.A. Phoenix hopes to rise in the West, but Blake and the boys have other plans. Hey, if you can't stand the heat, get off the ice. It's Fox NHL Saturday. Just four weeks to go in the regular season, the playoff pushes on. For some teams, postseason intensity is already a must. Today on Fox, they'll jockey for position as we offer up some of the NHL's most exciting players, including the league's top two points leaders. Hi, and welcome to Fox NHL Saturday. I'm Susie Culver, sitting in for James Brown, who's busy getting ready for boxing on Oscar night. But here, as always, to help guide us through the day, our choice for best supporting analyst, Dave Maloney. And Dave, big day here on Fox. A couple of teams could clinch playoff positions. Certainly so, Susan. Uh, Susie, I'm sorry, getting a little formal there. But in the meantime, on Broadway, the Red Wings are in with a win over the Rangers. Colorado can get in if Edmonton loses tonight against St. Louis and the Lance win this afternoon during the postseason. Of course, Devils already in in the East stars in in the West, but do they have enough to go all the way? With the NHL trade deadline set for Tuesday, it's time for some power shopping. So who's looking to unload players and who's looking to add a final piece to the playoff puzzle? Who better to speculate than my partner here and our colleague, John Davidson, who joins us live from New York. Now, J.D., teams like the Panthers are playing so bad that nobody's safe, but the name we seem to hear most often, goalie John Van Beesbrook. Well, with Steve Weeks injured, the Beezer will play goal today. However, I think that uh, he will no longer be a Panther at the end of the season, gang. I think that John Van Beesbrook, however, will not be moved before the deadline. Speaking of goaltenders who I think will be moved, I think Kirk McLean out of Carolina for the Hurricanes. He's got a $2.5 million contract. I think he will be moved. There's two or three teams showing interest there. And the other is the backup goaltender in New Jersey is Mike Dunham, a fine young goaltender, 25 years of age. And the reason is there's an expansion draft coming up in June. Nashville comes into the league. Now, when you protect your players, you have to look at your roster. You can look at it one of two ways. Protect one goaltender and five defensemen, or two goaltenders and only three defensemen. So I think for Lou Lamorello, what he's going to want to do is move Dunham now, get something for him, instead of losing Dunham in the expansion draft, and that makes a lot of sense. He's a good goalie. Well, no, uh, John, I know a lot of teams are looking for defensemen, and boy, Rich Peel on the Islanders seems to have garnered an awful lot of interest. Boy, six teams right now looking at him, David, including Detroit, but the Islanders wanted a fine young defenseman by the name of Anders Erickson. Detroit says no shot. Pilon is a rugged guy who can drive the other team nuts. He's either going to stay and stay with the Islanders or they're going to shop and shop and shop and try and get the best price back possible, probably another defenseman. Well, historically this time of the year, John, the Rangers have been buyers instead of sellers. It sounds like they, uh, how about Mike Keane? What's up there? Well, first of all, with Neil Smith running the show here, no matter what the Rangers do down the stretch here, he wants to get younger and cheaper. He realizes they're going through a rebuilding situation now. They have two veteran players, Mike Keane and, and Brian Scoodland, who both are veteran players who could help teams in the playoffs. Dallas is looking at Scoodland. Colorado is looking at Mike Keene. And Vancouver is showing some interest in some of the Ranger players, too. Remember, Mike Keenan used to coach the Rangers, so there's something happening there with the Rangers. Well, guys, we could talk about this stuff all day, but, John, let's take advantage of your place there in New York. What's the latest with Patty LaFontaine? Well, I saw Patty yesterday up where the Rangers practice in Rye, New York. Uh, if he goes two or three days without getting the headaches, he'll then fly to Chicago to see Dr. Kelly, and then they'll make a decision on what his future will be. I think he wants to play. I'm hoping he makes the right decision. John, thanks for the info. Enjoy the game. All right, gang. 
Now, Dave, LaFontaine is one of those guys who everybody loves to love, but then there are the group of players that even in their own locker room aren't the most popular, but you love to have them on well, your team. Well, that's for sure, uh, Susie. And Batty LaFontaine is a guy you like to cuddle. These guys don't like to cuddle or anything like that. But, you know, unlike the notorious fighters in the National Hockey League, these guys we're going to talk about are all effective on the ice while playing on the edge, as we see in today's Fox Faceoff. <laughs> As you might expect, the five we've picked have spent their fair share of time in the penalty box. Between them, they've amassed more than 7,700 minutes during their careers. Most of that in minors, but these numbers don't tell the full story. Let's start with Pittsburgh's Darius Kasparitis, who many say goes for the sneak attack, but at least he loves to go after the biggest guy he can find. Eric Lindros knows he's still on the Flyers' injured list. Big is not how you would describe the stature of Buffalo's Matthew Barnaby, who's listed at only 188 pounds. But his pesky play on the ice is huge for the Sabres. Despite more than 200 minutes, he's been in the box this season. Few players are more aggravating than Colorado's Claude Lemieux. Just ask any of the three teams he's played for. Then ask how much they love having him. Why, you ask? He's won three Stanley Cups, one with each team. Folks, you can't talk irritating without talking Dale Hunter of the Caps. That's because he's always on the ice. He hasn't missed a game since February of 95. He can score when it counts, too. Of his more than 300 career goals, four of them have come in overtime in the playoffs. Last but certainly not least, there's Theo Fleury in Calgary. The league's smallest player at only 5'6", certainly carries a big stick, leading the Flames in goals and points for the second straight season. You know, Susie, Matthew Barnaby has asked his way out of Buffalo, and I think they're going to do that. I expect he'll be gone by Tuesday. And he's won it out since they let Ted Nolan go in the summer. And that's a wrap for us until intermission. On the other side of this break, we'll send you out to your game, so lock it in. Fox NHL Saturday just getting started.